is another short video about what paper to choose when you're going to make a drawing. Generally speaking, people use sketchbooks or um, drawing cartridge paper, which comes in different thicknesses, and you get different results for your drawing according to what paper you use. Here I've got quite a thin sheet of cartridge paper, and it's white, and so I can use the actual paper itself to um, give me the highlights of what I might be drawing. So if I'm gonna draw, say, a, a, a branch of a tree, the shadow might come from the top and the highlight towards the bottom. So I'm using the paper itself to create the highlight by varying my tonal shading. If I decide I want something a little bit heavier as a paper, I could use a thicker cartridge paper or I could use watercolour paper and this watercolour paper has a really nice texture to it. I'm using here a 4B pencil because it's great for shading. So again, if I take the same sort of idea as the branch, you can probably see that lovely texture I'm getting from the paper, which when you're thinking of the subject that you're going to draw, you might want to select a paper that's got an interesting texture to it. This makes branches, if I'm doing a tree, look fantastic. Uh, it might make skin interesting too, or particularly if you're doing an old subject, uh, or landscape, it adds a different texture. So you can see with that shading how I'm getting a really interesting texture. If I lift that up a little bit closer, you can see the texture of the paper. Um, or I could use something really, really see-through and delicate as a paper to draw on. This, if you're doing something like a, a butterfly or something very fragile, again, I'll just give you the same bit of a branch, it gives you quite an interesting subtlety and delicacy. So choose your paper according to what you might be drawing. I particularly like using uh, mid-tone paper. Here's a brown wrapping paper. It's got a shiny side, it's got a matte side. So let's use the matte side. Artists like Degas used to use brown paper, in the Impressionists. Uh, people might find a piece of paper. I'm always digging paper out of the bin. And again, this is great because it allows you to not only use the paper to create a mid-tone, because the mid-tones are already there, you can use a light pencil, just grab one, to add your highlights. So if I was cross-hatching on this, also blend in, weave in some highlights. So it's quite nice because you can use the mid-tone of the paper. Likewise, there's a nice um, grey sheet and again with a sort of tube or branch or arm or whatever, you can put down the, the basics of the shading and then add a light or white into that. So I think a mid-tone paper is always quite nice. If you haven't got mid-tone paper, which um, you might not have, I love staining my own. So you can stain it with all sorts of things. Here we go, coffee. Just your general instant. That's a bit expensive really for staining. However, it gives a lovely um, aged look to the paper. Or uh, you can sprinkle bits of coffee on there, which will also give quite a nice staining. And already, before you even start uh, to draw, you've got a fantastically interesting background. You could uh, use a rag to add your background, or you could use a sponge, and already the marks on there for making your drawing or painting are quite exciting. Um, 
if you don't fancy using coffee, and let's say we could use just down here, I've got some other things here, ink. Um, you can use a very thick ink or straight onto the dry paper or you can wet your paper and let the ink bleed into it. I could splatter bits using water and ink mix. I could even mix my coffee in to give a two-tone effect. Now then, that's great. That's already an interesting background to either draw a face onto or to do a landscape onto. For instance, I could take a stick with my ink and start making marks or lines into that, drawing buildings, houses. I might put on my um, wash with a brush and work into it with some thicker lines with a brush or with a pencil. Experimentation is so much fun and it will make your drawings look very different from other people. So preparing an interesting surface is really key to making an unusual and interesting drawing. What I like doing is staining huge bits of paper and then taking my scissors and cutting these big pieces of paper up so that I've got lots of interesting little bits of paper that I could then work a drawing into or onto. So here we've got a piece of charcoal and I might work a landscape into this using using charcoal or using colour. It's probably helpful if the actual watercolour dries, the background dries before you start working into it. Um, but very exciting for mark making, you get atmospheric expressive drawings. So please remember, don't just pick up a plain white piece of paper when you're going to make a drawing. Have a think about the qualities of the paper you're using. I've also done here um, a painting which I've just ripped a bit of my favourite brown paper down and then I've done my painted drawing on top of that. So it adds another layer. So as I said, really think about what bit of paper you're choosing for what's going to go on it and you'll immediately get a more interesting considered drawing and you can write about your paper choice as part of your analysis in your sketchbook. Okay, thanks.